Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Yemi, which is Erevin Daf Yedalat, one Daf Yed Gimel with Beis, towards the bottom, right at the Mishnah, which is five lines from the bottom. It says the Mishnah, HaKaira Sha'amru, the Kaira, this beam that we have learned about up until this point, which is going to be placed across the entranceway to the Mavi, to create that separation from Shasarabim. It needs to be wide enough, Rechava Kadei Lekabal Ariach, to support an Ariach. What is that? V'ha'ariach is chatzi levena, a half of a brick. Shlosh tfachem. So the levena was three tfachem, three tfachem long, by three tfachem wide, it was a square. The ariach was a levena split in half, split into two. So they would use the half levena for construction. And the kaira needs to be able to support the ariach. Therefore the kaira needs to be a tefach wide. Let's take a look at Rashi, 16 lines from the bottom. Why does it need to have that ability to support an Ariach? It should appear like something permanent. It should have that permanence, resemblance. Which is meant to have a building built atop that beam. So it's meant to give the impression of a construction beam. You place it above the entranceway, which is meant to sustain a, a ceiling, a roof, perhaps a second floor. So the curry has to have some sort of permanence to it. Therefore, it needs to be wide enough to support a brick. Continues Rashi. A is a split levena. A levena is three tefachim. Resulting in the riach being half of three, which means it has a width of one and a half tefachim. So this riach now is going to be three tefachim in length and one and a half tefachim wide. And the kaira needs to be wide enough to support the oriach. Continues the Mishnah. Dayo le kaira, it is enough for the kaira, shatehei rochava tefach, that it be a tefach wide, kde le kabel oriach le rochvay, to support an oriach placed on its width. Meaning you have the kaira with this oriach which is three long and one and a half wide, and you place the oriach like this on the kaira. The kaira needs to be a tefach wide to support the oriach, which is actually one and a half tefachim wide. The one will ask how this works out. Continues the Mishnah, Ruchava Kadid Kabal Oriach. So the curtain needs to be wide enough to support the oriach. Ubriok Kadid Kabal Oriach. Likewise, it needs to be strong enough. It needs to be strong material that has the ability to actually support the brick placed upon it. Rabbi Doimer, Ruchava. It just needs to be wide enough. Even though it's not strong enough, You're using weak material, it can't actually support a heavy brick, that's okay. Continues the Mishnah. An example of that would be, If the kaira was made of straw or reeds, We treat it, we view it as though it's made of metal, in which case it can sustain this brick. And the point here is not just make-believe, the point is that since the Chachamim required him, to create, to present a kaira which conforms, at least in size, to the configuration of your typical uh, beam used for building purposes. So that already sends the message, it gives the impression of separateness. Look, this is a beam which has the size of your typical construction beam. It's making an entranceway. It's creating that separation between Shusurabim and the Mavi. So going to to reply the concept of a rain, we visualize it, we view it as though it's made of the appropriate material. And same thing regarding the positioning of the kaira according to Abuda. Even though practically it's placed in a way where you can't place a brick on it. For instance, akuma, it's lying crooked. We view it as though it's lying straight, which can, which can support a brick. Agula, for instance, if it's round, so it's a round beam, which cannot support a brick. We view it and treat it as though it is square. Now, how do we know how, um, how wide, how large this, this circle is meant to be to ensure that it has the proper width of a tefach? So this is very simple. We apply the formula of whatever object has a circumference of three tefachim, 
then you can be sure that yesh boyrech of tefach, that it has the diameter of a tefach. So if you have a beam, which is a round beam, with a circumference of three tefachim, then you know the diameter is a tefach, and it is kosher for the kairah. So this is all the words of Rabbi Yehuda, that although it's crooked, it's round, we treat it as though it can practically support a, br- a brick, because, at least in the configuration, the size, it has the ability to do so. Continues the Gemara. So Mishnah told us that the kur is meant to be a tefach wide in order to support the oriach. But how wide is the oriach? It's one and a half tefach. It says more tefach. You suffice with merely a tefach. Tefach of merzaboy. You should need one and a half tefach to support the brick. Answers the Gemara given the Rachav Lakaval tefach. Since it is wide enough to receive a tefach, idach chati tefach. The extra half a tefach, which overlaps on both sides of the kaira, malbinli bitina, he will go ahead and dab some cement on the bottom of that of the brick to connect it properly to the kaira. Mashumai gisa, a little on this side, the mashumai gisa, a little on the outside, the kaima, and it will stay in position. So although the kaira is only a tefach wide, it can properly support. The ariach, which will be overlapping a bit on each side, are placing some cement under both of those sides to keep it in place. Amar Rabba Barafuna, Kurish Amru, this Kura that we described, Tzricha Shatei Bria, Kadila Kabul Ariach, the Kura itself needs to be strong enough, made of material that can sustain the ariach. However, the Mamide Kura, Let's say there are some supports, some poles, which are actually holding up the kura, keeping it in place. Do they need to be strong enough to support a kura with a nerech placed on top of it or not? So he says, no, only the kura itself needs to be strong enough. Umami de kura, the supports of the kura, einon srichen, they don't need sheyu brien k'tele kabel kura v'orech. They don't need to be strong enough to support a kaira with an ariach on top of it, because actually we're not placing an ariach on the kaira. So as long as the kaira itself has that ability to support an ariach, that itself provides an indication of, of separateness, as we discussed. We're, we're trying to show that this is a separate area, this is a, an entranceway. This kaira has the appearance of a properly sized kaira and made of the proper material that can be used for construction. So although practically, if you place a brick on it, it's going to collapse because the supports of the kura are not strong enough to support the kura and the oriach. It's okay. Rav Chizda Amar, no, we have to view it practically. Echot zev, echot zev. The kura and the supports, Tzrich and Shiubrin, we require that they be strong enough to the kabel kura of oriach to support a kura and a oriach placed on top of it. Let's take a look at Rashi, two lines from the top. Umami de kura. Says Rashi, Menichal Gabi say this if you place the kura on top of these rods that are supporting it, ain't srichen. Shiubrin, they don't need to be strong enough, le kabel kura veriach, to support the kura and the oriach placed on top of it. Elo le kabel kura levad, as long as they're strong enough to support the kura itself, that's okay. Explains Rashi. The whole le yavi oriach Allah, practically we're not placing a brick on the kura. Well, the kura would be in a kvis. The kura itself needs to be pre- needs to present itself as something of, of permanence, as though it appears like a, a construction beam. Kehechad the havi hekemali so it should provide the proper indication of separateness. Avol mami dea, but the supports we don't need to reckon with that. Like tali hekir be the do the hacker. It's not dependent on them. We don't reckon with the supports. We focus on the kura itself, which is providing that hacker. And since the kura itself conforms both in its size and in its material, its durability, to the requirements, it appears like your typical construction beam. That is enough to provide the hecker, the indication of separation, of the a doorway impression, to separate the mavi from Shisarab. That's the first shita. Rav Chizda says, no, we have to view it practically. Echadzeh, echadzeh. Kura bi'inon bri'as de'oriach. The kura also requ- the kura requires a strength to sustain the oriach. And likewise, the mamidim. Umamidea, its supporters, bow, brios, the kura oriach, they need to have the strength to actually sustain the kura and the oriach placed on top of it. Continues the Gemara. Omer of Sheshes. 
So he placed the kaira atop the entrance to the mavi. He wanted to improve things. So he, he ran a mat right next to the kaira. He hung a mat alongside the kaira to increase the closure of the entranceway. So they have the mavi, the mavi here, the kaira placed on top of the entranceway to the mavi across the entranceway. And he placed the machzelis flush to the kaira, hanging over the entranceway to the mavi. The problem is the machzelis, which can really serve as a machitza, was not hanging all the way down to the ground. It stopped short, three tfacham to the ground below. So it doesn't really provide machitza. He says of Sheshis, he ruined things for himself. Omar of Sheshis, gabi He placed the kaira alongside the entranceway to the mavi, uparatzala machzelis. And he also hung a machzelis on this kaira. So now we have the kaira crossing the entrance and the machzelis hanging across the entrance as well. And the machzelis came up short, three tfacham from the ground below. Kaira inkan, the kaira is useless. Mechitza inkan. And the mechitza as well is ineffective. Why? Kaira inkan, the kaira is ineffective. The mechase, because it's covered up with the mechitza, with this machzelis, which takes away the, the hacker. It's not really noticeable. Therefore, it's ineffective. Mechitza inkan, the mechitza as well is ineffective. The havila mechitza, shagdayim baikimba, since it doesn't reach the ground below, it doesn't really prevent passage. It is a mechitza where the g'dayim, the goats, a biking bar, they access through it, they breach through it. It's not creating a contained entity and therefore it doesn't work. What if we have a kaira which comes short? It begins on one side of the mavi. It starts off from one wall on one side. Vein in the gas because it's there, but it comes up short, doesn't reach the other side. Or in a case where we have two beams that are being used in tandem, the first kaira starts at this wall, the second kaira begins at the other side, but they don't meet each other, they come up short, and they don't meet each other. The halacha is, depends on the gap. What size gap was left in between? If it's smaller, a smaller gap than three, we don't need to bring another kaira because less than three is considered to be closed up and we view it as one continuous entity, it connects with each other. Shloisha, if the gap is three tfachim or greater, tzorach lavi kaira you need to bring another kaira to replace this one. So according to the Tanakhama, lavud is dependent on three tfachim. Hashim Leil Eimer, he says lavud is anything less than four tfachim. If so, Pachas midal, if the gap is less than four tfachim, ain't tzorach lavi There's no need to bring another kaira. Arba, but if it's four tfachim or more, tzorach lavi kaira cheres, you need to replace it with another kaira. Continues the price. V'chein beis kairis amatimus. If you have two narrow kairis lying side by side, so each one of these beams that are adjacent to each other are not wide enough to be considered a proper kaira because they're not a tefach wide. Loi bezu kedil kabaloriach. This one is not wide enough, doesn't have the ability to support a brick. For loi bezu kedil kabaloriach. Neither does the second one have that ability. Can they both work together? Be mitzdarif to be considered a kura, so it depends. Im mekabelis oriach lerochbei tefach. If they're situated close enough to each other, that they have the ability between themselves to support this oriach who is lying on his side, on his narrow side. So the oriach is half of the levena. Levena is a brick which is three tefachim long by three tefachim wide. The oriach is half of that brick. So the reach is three tefachim long by one and a half wide. Now generally a kaira needs to be a tefach wide in order to support the oriach who is lying on his narrow side, which is a tefach and a half, which is going to be properly supported by that kaira. So the Baisi here is telling us if these two beams are situated close enough to each other, that they have the ability to support the oriach who is lying on his narrow side, which is one and a half tefachim, so even if there is, for instance, a tefach of gap between these two kairis, it's still okay because the reich, which is wider than a tefach, he's a tefach and a half, 
even on his narrow side, he can be supported properly by those two beams. A little bit on this beam, a little bit on the other beam. So in Mechavlis, Aluriach Lerach, but if they support an Aluriach who is sitting on his narrow side, Tefach. So even if there's a Tefach in between these two beams, it's okay. Ein Tzorach Lahavi Kerach Heres, there's no need to bring another Kerach. But if they're too far apart, they don't have the ability to support this ariach. Sarach la vikarachers need to replace them with another kur. Now, Shem Gamaliel Aimer, he applies a leniency. He says, even if they're far apart, but they still have the ability to support the ariach, which is going to be situated along his long side. So, generally speaking, the uh, the way they, they use the bricks is in this manner. They don't point the brick into the building. Rather, they place it alongside the length of the wall, the way we described it. Shemuel will tell us that even if the curve doesn't have the ability, these two curves don't have the ability to support the brick, which is lying the, uh, the typical way. Rather, he's lying along his longer side, then it's okay. If they're situated close enough, that they can be Mechabal Lariach, who is lying this way, over his long side, which is three Tvachim. So they can support the Lariach in that manner? That's okay. Ain't Sarach Lavikar Acheres, no need to bring another Kur. Vim Lav, but otherwise, if there's two five wide apart, Sarach Lavikar Acheres need to be replaced with another Kur. Kanizah Brysa. Hoyu Achas Lamala, Achas Lamat. So these two, these twin Kairis, Let's say they weren't lying side by side. Rather, one was situated up high and one was down below. Can we connect these two curves? Rabbi Yisib, Rabbi Daimer, Royan Esel Yoyniki Lamata. We applied the concept of Royan, which was actually the sheet of his father, Rabbi Yisib, the son of Rabbi Yehuda. So Rabbi Yehuda held the concept of Royan. We visualize things. Here as well, he says we can visualize Royan Esel Yoyniki Lamata. We view the top one as though he's down adjacent to the bottom one. And now they can join forces and create a proper kura. Or, conversely, we can lift the bottom one, we view it as though the achtoyna is situated near the, near the upper one, and now they can work together in tandem. Taisus brings the Gemara Sukkah that was speaking where the two portions were actually within three tfachim, which is within the concept of Lavod, and we can go ahead and bring them together. So this is the sheet of Rabbi Yisra Yehuda. In contrast with the Tanakama, who does not apply rain, and therefore in this case, when they're not lying next to each other, they can't practically support a brick, then it's ineffective. But he holds, you can go ahead and join them together. Let's view as though they're lying side by side. Ubalvat provided that the upper one isn't beyond the 20 amma limit, in which case it's not suitable for Kaira. So it can't be with beyond the 20 Amis, the shear of 20 Amis from the ground below, or the lower portion of this Kaira, the lower Kaira can't be less than 10 Tvachim. can't be below the 10 Tvach mark of the ground below, in which case it's unsuitable for Kaira. Okay, so this was the Brisa. says Abaye, Amar Abaye, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda is son of Rabbi Yehuda. And it appears like he holds like his father Shita. So he holds like his father Bechada in one aspect. And he disagrees with him when it comes to another aspect. He agrees with his father in one halacha the Isle Royin because he subscribes to the concept of Royin. We visualize things. And therefore he says we can go ahead and treat the curve which is lying beyond, far away from the bottom curve as though they're together and adjacent to each other. Since the configuration, since the size of those curves conform to the proper size. So we, we apply the concept of Royan. So when it comes to that, he agrees to his father, who applies Royan. And now Mishnah, he says he can use straw, etc. Because Royan, as long as the size conforms, the position is irrelevant. So when it comes to that, he agrees to his father. When it comes to another halacha, he disagrees with his father. Why? Rabbi the holds that even a curry which is beyond 20 amas is kosher. 
as we learned back on the Mishnah of Beis. Rabbi Yisrael, Rabbi Yehuda Savar, in contrast to his son who holds, the soy chaf in, only if it's within 20 amis, it is kasher, but if it's beyond 20 amis, it's unsuitable, as he just told us. You must make sure that both portions of that kaira, of this twin kaira, are situated within the prescribed shear of 20 amis. Getting back to our Mishnah, where Vida tells us that as long as the kaira is wide enough to accept the ariach, that's okay, as long as it's wide enough, even if it's not strong enough. In contrast with the Chachamim who hold, it needs to be strong enough as well. So Yehuda taught, apparently he was the Rabbi of Chia, the son of Rav. So he taught him Kameh the Rav. This took place in the presence of Rav, the presence of the father. So he taught him as follows. That according to the Rishit of Chachamim, as long as the kair is wide enough, it has that tefach, that's okay, even though it's not bria, it's not strong enough to support the brick. So when Rav heard this, he corrected him. Amalei Esnai. Teach him the correct version. Ruchava bria. Yes, it needs to be ruchava and bria, according to the Chacham. Says the more, is that true? V'amar b'loy amar Rav. He told us the name of Rav himself. Ruchava ava arba. If the kair is four tefachim wide, which is very significant, even though it's not strong enough to sustain a brick, that's okay. So apparently, supporting a brick is not a precondition. Says the Gemara, there it's different. If it's so wide, it's four and wide, that's such a significantly sized kaira, which provides indication hacker. Even if it's not strong enough to sustain a brick, it is kasher. But a smaller sized kaira, for instance, if it's only a tefah wide, certainly needs to actually have the ability to support a brick. Continues the Gemara Hoysa Shal Kash. So this is Rabbi Yudha saying that even if it's not strong enough to actually support, it's okay. For instance, if it was made of straw or reeds, and we view it as though it's made of metal. So this is my Kamash one. What is he teaching us with these demonstrations, with these examples of straw and reeds? He already told us that if it's not strong enough, it's okay because we treat it as though it's strong enough. Why bring these examples? What's the added Chiddush? Says Umar Damrin and Roy is coming to tell us that we view things. Hainuach. This is merely a repetition of what we already just said. That if it's not strong enough, we apply Roy. Why bring these examples? Says Umar, there is a chiddush. Maudatim, perhaps I would say. Bimino Amrina. If the kaira consists of the min, the type of material, which is generally strong enough to support a brick. For instance, you make it of wood. So a wooden beam generally has the ability to sustain a brick. So perhaps I would say, only in the case where you use the proper material, then we say, Royin Amrina. We apply the concept of Royin since it appears to be similar to your st- standard construction beam, which has the ability to support. But Shaloi Bimina, if it's not the same type of material, for instance, using straw reeds, which generally don't have the ability to support a brick, perhaps over there, Loi Amrina would not apply the concept of Royin, because it's evident and clear. This thing is soft and flimsy and cannot sustain a brick. Hamash Malon, the Chiddush here is that even in this case, we apply Royin as long as it conforms to the size of your standard beam, that is sufficient. Another example we have is Akuma. If it's crooked, placed at an angle which it can't uh, support a brick, Royin is Akilu Pshuto, viewed as though it's sitting flat and straight and can support a brick. Pshuto, isn't this self-evident? Why would this case be different? Certainly, we can conclude that Royan will be applied here as well. Why add this example? Says Makamash Malank to Rabzera. The Khidash here is like Rabzera described. Don't Rabzera. He besoy Khamovi. Let's say the Kaira is within the confines of the Mavi, so it's okay. But it's bent outward. Vakwamisa, its bent portion is Khusla Mavi. So you have the Mavi at the entrance way to the, the Kaira at the entrance way to the Mavi, but it protrudes out of the Mavi. It sticks out, it has a bent portion which is sticking out of the Mavi into Shusarabim. Or, he besoich esrim, the kur itself is within 20, vakumisa, its bent portion is lamalam esrim. It's beyond 20. So if it's lying on top of the Mavi and it's bent upward, with that bent portion being beyond the 20 amma limit. Or, third case is, he lamalam asar, the kur itself is above 10 tvachim, so it's okay. 
Vakmumisa lamat masar, but its bent portion dips down below ten tefachim. So what's that halacha? Royan, we visualize kosh ilu yinotel akmumisa. If you would remove that bent portion from the kur, and what do you have left? Vein benzel is eshloisha, and between the remaining portions of the kur is a gap of less than three tefachim. So for instance, if the kur is here and it's lifting beyond 20 amas. So if you remove this bent portion and you take a look at the remaining two parts of the curve which are within 20 and the gap between them is three tfachim, is less than three tfachim, which is lovet, then you're okay, they connect each other, we ignore the portion which is protruding beyond 20. Ain't so love a need not bring another curve. Vim laugh. But if the gap between the remaining portion of the curve is more than, is three or more, in which case they can't connect each other, it's ineffective, and you need to bring another kura. Sarach lavi kura cheres. So this is the chiddush of the Mishnah. A bent kura in this manner can be used according to Yehuda, despite the fact that it's crooked and you can't practically place a brick on it. We view it as though it's straight. It says Mahanami pshita. This is also pashat. Why would I think that we cannot apply lavi in this case? What's the problem? What's the point of Yehuda? Why is he to add an example of akuma? To his list, says the Gemara, there's one case that involves a chiddush. He b'seich mavi, when the courage was in the mavi, v'akum misa chusl mavi, and its bent portion protrudes out of the mavi, it's trichalei. He needs to teach us that even this case is fine. Why? Ma'od the ten. Perhaps I would say, leichosh. Let me be concerned. Dilma, osilam shuche basra. Perhaps one will mistakenly continue carrying along the kaira along its crooked portion, along the portion which is actually outside of the mavi, you won't differentiate. He'll carry alongside the, the kur, even alongside the portion which is already in Rishis Rabbim. Perhaps we'll create that confusion, you cannot use this, this kur, Kamash Malon. So he teaches us, no, there's no such a concern, and the kur can be used even in such a manner. So in summary, we learned about the sheer kur. All agree, Tanakama of Yehuda, that the kur needs to be a tefach wide. Tanakama maintains, it also needs to be strong enough bria to support a ariach. Regarding the supports of the kura, the mamidah kura, the, so the rods which are supporting the kura, are they required to have the ability to support a kura with a brick on top of it? We have machlekes. So the kura itself needs to be strong enough. And the Gemara added that if the kura is wide, it's fotvachim wide in this case, it does not need to have the ability to support a brick because of its large size and significance. Ramila maintains, even if the curve is not bria strong enough to sustain a brick, for instance, if it's uh, made of straw, or even if the position is a problem, it's lying crooked, it's round. Or as Igmar told us, if we have a curve split into two, with one portion of the curve up on top, the other one down below, we apply the concept of royan, we visualize it as though it's a proper curve, and it provides the hacker. Igmar tells us if one attaches a a mat, he hangs it from the kura to block the doorway, and it doesn't reach the ground below, it's possible. Because the three tfachim gap allows traffic through, and it does not cons- constitute a mechitza. What if we have uh, two narrow beams lying side by side? Tanakama tells us if they're close enough to support a brick on his narrow side, and it's fine. If Shingam Lil says, even if they're wider apart, they can support the brick who's lying on his long side, which is three tfachim, that too is okay. Continues the Gemara. Agula, if the kura is round, we treat it as though it's square, and this again is Shita's Rabbi Yehuda, who applies the concept of Roy. Says the Gemara here too, what is the Chiddush? Hasul Amali, what is the Chiddush here? This is merely just another example of Roy. Safe at Strichle, it is the last portion of the Mishnah, which is coming to teach us a Chiddush. To give us the formula, Whenever there's a circumference of three tfachim, you are sure that the roichav of this beam is a tefach. So that's the formula. It is three to one. So that formula is necessary to be taught now Mishnah to dictate to us the proper dimension of this curve. How do I know that this formula is meant to be applied? Ask the rush. What do you mean, how do I know? Take a look. When something has a circumference of three, has the diameter of one, says the rush, because we know 
that it's not entirely accurate. This is the formula called pi. So it's not exactly 3 to 1. It's 3.14, etc. It's inaccurate. Nevertheless, the mission tells us when to apply this formula, despite the fact that it's not exactly correct. Because the Torah is not mockpit, it's not, it's not so particular that a person should go ahead and measure things so perfectly exact. The Torah suffices with this formula to apply the 3 to 1 formula. The Rambam also says that, that we know it's not an exact formula, nevertheless, not Torah. This is the formula meant to be applied, and that's the Gemara's Kasha, Menon Amili. How do we know that indeed this is the correct formula to apply to Allah of Torah? Or Rabbi Yechnon, Amakro, the Torah, describing the Yam Mishasa Shleimai, that Shleimai Melch built this large pool, the Pasuk describes it as follows. Vayas Asayam Mutzak Eser Ba'ama Misfasa Atzfasai. So this Yam, this pool, had an interior size of Ten amos, from one end to the other. Agoil saviv, it was round. Vechamish ba'amakamasi, five amos in height. And what was the circumference? Vekav shloishim ba'amo. A circle of thirty amma, Yosef oishi saviv surrounded this pool. So you see that something which has a diameter of ten has a circle of thirty. Says the Gemara, but you But you didn't take into account the thickness of the of the ridge of the wall. The ten amos described here is the interior space within the pool. But the circle of 30 was describing the circumference outside the pool. What about this suffer, the, the lip, meaning the thickness of the wall, which adds to the diameter, in which case it's more than ten amos. So how can you have a circumference of merely 30? The suffer, the lip, was merely very thin. Terry describes it as a it was thin like a petal of a rose. So it's very thin and doesn't really add to the diameter. The thickness of the yam was a tefach down below. So the sofa was like a perach shoshan, very thin. Says more, but that it still takes up some space. What about that little bit of thickness of the lip? He must take that into consideration. Says the Gemara, When we took the count of 30 of the circumference, that too was referring to the interior space. So since the interior was 10, and no more than 10, so the circumference was 30. Tanya, Reb Yam this Yam of Shleim HaMelech, Hayamachzik, Meya V'chamisha It accommodated 150 mikvahs. Rashi says each mikvah, it's meant to have 40 saw. And this Yam Shal Shashleimai contained a space and area amount of water which was equal to 150 mikvahs. So says, well, let's analyze things. Let's work it out. Mikti, let's take a look. Mikvah Kamahavi. How large, how much water goes into a mikvah? Barm saw. Kedasani Vrochas Psorai Bamayim. Bimay mikvah. Person is table on a mikvah. Kol Psorai. The person says, Kol Psorai. So a person needs to be table all at once. Therefore, the mikvah, the space, and the water needs to accommodate the entire person all at once. Mayim shekol gufa ilban needs to be water which accommodates the entire person at once. Fikamahain, what size mikvah is required to accommodate a person who is an ama wide? Amal ama brum brum shalish shalish amis. Mikvah needs to be configured as a ama al ama, an ama wide, an ama long brum shalish amis with a height of three amis, which conforms to the size of a person. Accommodates a person within. How much water? The shear of chacham may mikvah abayim sa. Chacham calculated that the shear of a mikvah is forty sa, which is the amount of water which is contained in this size area of ama by ama with a height of three. Okay, so the shear of a mikvah is one by one times three for a total of three square ama, and it equals to forty sa of water. Now let's analyze. The size of the Yam Shasa Shleimai, for which we said that it accommodated 150 mikvahs. So the Yam Shasa Shleimai was 10 by 10, with a height of 5 amas. So how many square amas is that? 10 by 10 by 5 is 500 square amas. Kama Havalu Chomesh Megamidi, for a total of 500 square amas. 
Let's meya. So let's take that 500. Let's take 300 of that 5. How many mikvahs will fit into that 300? So mikvah is again one long, one wide, and three high. So one by one by three is a total of three square amma. So into 300 square amma, how many mikvah fit into it? Meya accommodates 100. So you've taken the 500 amma of the yam of Shlema, take off 300, which accommodates 100 mikvahs, with each, each mikvah being three amas. You have another 200 amas remaining. So Lemei of Achamshin, within 150 of those amas, how many mikvahs fit in? Each mikvah is three. Chamshin, for a total of 50. 50 times three equals 150. So why does the Yam Shlemei shl- shl- need to be 500 amas? But our Ba may have a Chamshin Saga, if it would only be 450 square amas, it would accommodate 150 mikvahs, with each mikvah being three amis. Says the Gemara, Hanami will be reborn. This cheshman, this calculation is only if we're assuming that the Yam of Shlemei was built as a square. So if it's a square, 10 by 10, with a height of 5, that equals 500 square amma. So you're left with extra space. But it actually wasn't a square. Yam Shasa Shlemei, Ogalaya, it was a circle which certainly takes up less space, has less square footage than a square area. It's actually 25% less. Says my Michtay, let's take a look. Kama Maruba Yasra Al Eagle Revia. How much greater is a square than a circle? It's 25% more. Rashi explains because, very simple, you have a diameter, a circle with a diameter of a, an Amma, that gives you a circumference of three. But if it's a square amma instead of a circle amma, then the, ra- the, sur- the line around that square is four ammas. So it just changed from three to four. So apparently the space of the square occupies 25% more than the circle. Of course, we're speaking about an area which has equal, equal angles on all sides. So a square is greater larger 25% in size than a, a circle. If so, says the Gemara, we're going to get stuck again. <laughs> because this number of 500 that we came up with was based on a square. 10 by 10, 10 long, 10 wide, by 5 height. So it was working with the assumption that it was a square, giving us 500. Now we must deduct from that an amount of 25% because the Yam Shoshashleim was a circle. Let's analyze. La'aramea. Let's take that original number 500. Let's address 400 of that and deduct 25%. So 400 turns into 300. How many mikvahs can that accommodate? A mikvah being 3 amas square. So 300 amas will accommodate 100 mikvahs. La'aramea. The original 400 would actually now turns into 300 because you deduct the 25%. Mea accommodates 100 mikvahs because 300 will accommodate a hundred times three. Lemea. Now what's remaining from that original 500? You've already deducted 400, you're remaining with a hundred. Now that hundred was based on a square, that the yam was a square. Now we must deduct 25%, a quarter of that hundred, equaling only 75. How many mikvahs are included in 75 square amma? 25. Lemea, Esrim 25 mikvahs, each mikvah being three amas. So how many mikvahs in total is this Yam Shasr accommodating? Only 125? Hani, Meyav Esrim Hamisha, Havalu. You only have 125, not 150. So how can we say, how can Rebchia tell us that the Yam Shasr Shleim accommodated 150 mikvahs? So either way, it's difficult. If the Yam was square, it's above and beyond 150 mikvahs. If it was circle, then it's less than 150. Says the Gemara, we have a compromise. Partly square, partly circled. The bottom three amis were square, the top two amis were circled. In which case, it will conform to 150 mikvahs. Tani Ramavari Cheskel, Yam Shas Shleimai, Sholish Amis Tachtoinis Merubois. The lower three amis were actually square. So let's calculate. So if you have 10 long, 10 wide, by three amma high, 
So it's a total of 300 square amas. 300 square amas will accommodate how many mikvah? Each mikvah is 3 amas square, will accommodate 100 mikvah. So that takes care of the bottom portion of the yam. The top portion was a circle. Ushtay milyon agulis. The top two amas were circle. So what is the entire area of that top portion? So if it would be a square, in which case it would be measured as 10 by 10 with a height of 2, that would equal 200 square amma. But now that that top portion is circle, deduct 25% from 200, giving you 150, which accommodate how many mikvahs? 50 mikvahs, each one being 3 amas. So you add this 50 to the original 100, you have exact total of 150. So it works out. Says the Gemara, so addressing this um, b'risa of Ramvari Cheskel, who described the bottom portion being square and the top round, how do you know? Certainly you can't say it was in the reverse, that the bottom was round the top square. The Sfasa el The Pasuk describes the Safa, the lip as being round. So it must be the top was round. el machada. How do you know the top two Amis were round? Perhaps it was only the top, the top Amma that was round. But the second Amma was actually square, giving you a larger area. Says more like that, that you can't say that. The the Pasuk says, Al Paim Bas Yochel. The pool of Shlema Melech, it contained 2,000 Bas. Bas Kamahavir. How much is a Bas? Shalosh Sin, three saw. How do we know? The Chsiv. Maser Habas Minakur. Bas is a Maser, a tenth of a Kur. A Kur is 30 saw, so Bas is three saw. The Pasuk says it had 2,000 Bas. 2,000 times 3 is 6,000 saw. Davel Hu Shita Alpha Gravy. It totals 6,000 of this measurement, meaning 6,000 saw. So once we know that the Yam Shal was 6,000 saw, that equals 150 mikvah. Because each mikvah is 40 saw. So 40 times 150 is 6,000. And this proves that evidently the configuration of the Yam Shal was the way that we described it, which will equal in space to 150 mikvah. Says the Gemara, how can you say that the Yam contained 2,000 bas? There's another Pasuk which seems to indicate otherwise. Vaksiv, Machsik Batim Shloish Salaf, 3,000 bas. Says Mahula Gutcha. That's including the heaping portion, which actually adds a third to the total. So instead of 2,000, it turns into 3,000. Amrabai, Shma Mina, Hai Gutcha Tilsa. Apparently, the heaping portion adds a third to the total. Evidently, we're speaking about when we fill it with dry material, which can form that heap, and that heap totals a third of the entire content. So it turns from 2,000 bas to 3,000 bas. So it's more of a tsunami. And we find likewise in the Mishnah, which teaches us that the heap is a third of the total. Shida, this wagon, teva, a large chest, a migdal, this large closet, kaveras akash, a large basket made of straw, a kaveras akana, made of reeds. Uboir, sfin alexandris, or a pit meant to store fresh water in the sfin alexandris. So all these different types of kalim, even though they have bottoms. They're large enough to contain 40 saw of liquid. Which equal 2 kur of dry. They're considered to be tar due to their large size and uh, the fact that they're not really portable due to their large size and their weight and the fact that they can contain so much. They don't have a din of a cleave from a kabbal tumor. Now the fact that the mission says when it comes to liquid, it's 40 sa. And that equals 2 core, which is 60 sa of dry. How do the two numbers work? Apparently, when it's dry material, it can be heaped, which adds a third to the total, which turns it from 40 sa to 60 sa. So in summary, we learned that the Yam Shah equaled in size and content to 400 mikvahs. How do we get to that? A mikvah, which is an amma long and amma wide by 3 ammas in height. So it's 3 amma square, time that by 150 equals 450 square amma. The yam shas shleima initially we figured was square, which is 10 long, 10 wide by 5 height, which equals 500 square amma, which was too much. We proceeded that it was round, which deducts 25%, which equals 375, which is not enough. We concluded that the bottom 3 amis was square, so it's 10 by 10 by 3, gives you an equal a uh, total of 300 amma square, and the top portion, the top two amas was round. So it's 10 by 10 by 2, but deduct 25% from 200, 
which is 150 for a total of 450 amos squared that can accommodate 150 mikvahs. Continues the Mishnah. L'chayin she'omru. The L'chayin that was spoken about regarding placement at the entrance to the Mavi. How large are they? Goyvan asar tzvacham need to be ten tzvacham high. V'rach van v'avin koshu, their width and their thickness, even a minute amount. Rabbi Yisrael v'rachav, rach van gimot tzvacham, their width needs to be at least three tzvacham, which is beyond the sheer of love. Says the more l'chayin she'omru, the mission begins with a lashon rabim, a plural term. The lechis that were said. Why do you need two lechis at a mavi? Lema, shall we say, tzna in the Mishnah teaches us stama. The anonymous Mishnah is Kerbal Lazar. Following his shita, the Amar l'chayayim binam. Two lechis are required, one on each side of the entranceway. And not like the Shizah Rabbanan that suffices with merely one lechi. Says, well, no. Ma'ar l'chayayim, l'chayayim di alma. The Mishnah is choosing just a general term. The lechis that are placed by the general mavis, but certainly one lechi is enough. If that's the case, Nami, in the mission of Kaira as well, it should say, Kairais, Nisni Kairais, Oh my Kairais, Kairais Dalma, in reference to the general Kaira that are placed by all the mothers. Why then does the mission earlier tell us, Ha Kaira Shamru, a Lashon Yachad, a singular term? Says so what you write, Elahachi Kamar, this is what the mission over here means to say, Oisan Lachayayin, Shenechelku, Bohen, Rablaz Vachachamim. We know there's a Machlaikis. That Reb Lezer requires two, Chacham require one. So in reference to that Machlekes, those L'chayayin, meaning that Machlekes, Reb Lezer and Chachamim, how are those Lechis meant to be configured? Goyvan asar tzvachim, v'roichvan v'avin koshu ten high, a width and thickness of even a koshu. V'kama koshu. How much is a koshu? Tan Reb Chia, even if it's only thick like a strap used to tie together the garment, then that is sufficient. It turns out that says this is accurate, meaning it can't be less than this. It needs to be at least this thickness, which is actually the width of an etzba. Tana we learned. If one placed his lechi halfway into his mavi, not at the entranceway, then it's okay. They can only use the mavi up until that point. Pshita, isn't that simple? Why would I think that I can use past the lechi? Says the Gemara, the Ema rather say like this: Yesh lechatzi mavi. The chiddush here is that he's allowed to use the interior of the mavi up until the lech. Ha namish pshita. This is also obvious. Why not? Mahal the tem. Perhaps I would say lechosh is a concern. Dilma asay lishta moshe bekule. Perhaps he might mistakenly continue using the mavi area even beyond the lechi point. Kamash malon. The chiddush here is there's no such concern, and he can use the interior portion of the lechi of the mavi up until the lech. Amarava. Also lechi the mavi. He affixed the lechi to his mavi. Vig bia min akam reshloisha, and he lifted it off the ground three tefach. Oishe fliger min akam reshloisha. Or he placed the distance of three tefach between the lechi and the wall. Lo yasu leklom. It's an effect. The chiddush here is afilu lev shimlam liel. The Amar who said armrina lovet that lovet is applied when it's less than four tefachim. He will agree in this case that doesn't work, even though the gap is less than four. Hanemini lemala. That's only when the gap is up on top. For instance, the kaira on top is less than four tefachim to the wall of the mavi. That's okay. We consider it to be connected. Avalamata. When the gap is down below, kivan the havi mechitza shagdoyim baikua. Since this mechitza is not really containing properly, because of this gap, it allows the goats to breach through it. Loikama. Even he will not say that it's considered to be one and connected. So this is this lechi. It's meant to serve as a sort of mechitza. It's being placed on the ground to to make that containment. So if there's a gap down below of three tefachim or more, all will agree that it's ineffective. Rabbi Yisuf, I'm a rock from Gimot Tefachim. The lechi needs to be three tefachim in width. Amr Rabbi Yisuf, Amr Rabbi Dov Mashmo. Ein halacha Rabbi Yisuf, loy behilmi v'loy bechayayin. We don't follow Rabbi Yisuf's halacha. Not with regards to hilmi, the salt water made on Shabbos. This is discussed in Masechet Shabbos. We don't concur with his chumra there, nor with his chumra by lechis. We require three tefachim. Behilmi Amraslan. You actually told us that by Hilmi we don't follow Rabbi Yaisi's shita. Actually explains to us that Rabbi Yaisi fell ill and due to his illness he forgot things that he learned and taught. So Rabbi Huna Rachina reminded him, you know, now you're telling us that we don't follow the halacha like Rabbi Yaisi by Hilmi nor by the Chayayin. Actually, you never told us in this manner. When it came to Hilmi, you told us we don't follow Rabbi Yaisi. But when it comes to the Chayayin, the Chayayin, you never told us. That we're not meant to follow Rabbi Yaisi. 
So Rabbi Yosef responded to him, why would you differentiate? Why over there would you say that we don't follow Rabbi Yosef? Because he's a yachad, the pligi Rabban Olay, because the Rabban, or the majority, disagree with him. The same thing here, the Chayai Nami, pligi Rabban Olay, they disagree with him. So why would I think here to follow Rabbi Yosef's shita? Amalei, so Rabbi responded, there's a difference. Shani l'chayayim. L'chayayim are different. Mishum the koi Rebbe kavaseh. Because we see that Rebbe, and Af Yud, the Gemara concluded that Rebbe, holds like Rebbe Yaisi, who requires the lechet to be three tfachim. So perhaps that would be a reason to, to follow Rebbe Yaisi's shit. Continues the Gemara. Rebbe Chumi Ras Nihachi. Rebbe Chumi presented it as follows. Omar Rebbe Yudah Breda of Shmuel Bashilas. Mishmei the Raf. Ein lach Rebbe Yaisi. Loi behilmi. Loi behayayim. And hilmi and lachayayim. We don't follow Rebbe Yaisi's shit. Omrle, so the uh, other people responded to Rav Chumi, who dictated the statement, Amris, did you really say this? Omrle, who? No, I didn't say it. The Ritva explains that he changed his mind. Omr Rava, so Rava said, Holy Kim, the name of Hashem, Allah and Shvu. Omr, certainly he said this. I actually learned it from him. That the Allah does not follow Rav Yesi in Hilmi nor in Lachayai. Says the Gemara, so why did he change his mind? Why did Rav Chumi revert? Because the Rebbeisi would generally present his logic, the reason for his positions, with such clarity. And therefore, we meant to follow Rebbeisi's shita, which was presented so convincingly. Therefore, he wanted to follow Rebbeisi. We have a machlekes. The Chacham maintain a lechei could even be small in size. Rebbeisi requires three tfachim. How does the lecha follow? Amalei Rabbi responded, Go ahead and take a look. My Amadavar, what is the nation doing? And certainly the Minak is even a Kalshu. Ika the Maslaha, some related this conversation on the following topic. Ha Shoisa Maimlit Smoy. One drinks water to quench his thirst. Oimer Shakoli Madvari, that's the bracha that he makes before drinking. Rabtaf and Oimer. The bracha before drinking is actually Bayur Nafashes, Rabbis Vachasroina, and Hashem created Nafashes, many Nafashes with their needs. Al Koma Shabrasa, in addition to other things that he created for them. That's the bracha before drinking. What does the locha say? Which bracha is meant to be said? Amalei Sabai responded, Go take a look. My Amadvar, what everybody is doing, and certainly the prevailing custom is to make Shakol Niyabadvar. Okay, time for a brief review of today's daf. We began discussing Allah Habakaira, which needs to be a tevach Y to support this brick. Kuita Tanakama needs to be strong enough to support the brick. Or white for Tfacham. Do the poles that are supporting the kaira need to be strong enough to sustain the kaira with its brick? Or machlekes? According to Rabbi Yudha, even if it's not strong enough to support a brick, even if it's crooked, round, or one part of the kaira is up on top, one on bottom, we apply the concept of royin, and we view it as though it's properly configured and properly placed. We learned that if one spreads a mat alongside the kaira and blocks the kaira, it's possible. What if we have two narrow beams lying side by side? Tanakama tells us if they're close enough to support a brick on his narrow side, then it's fine. If Shingam Lil says, even if they're wider apart, they can support the brick who's lying on his long side, which is three tfachim, then that too is okay. We learned from the Yarm Shas Shleima that the circumference of a circle is three times its diameter. We proceeded with the Allah of which needs to be ten tfachim in height, the width and thickness, even a kol shul, like the strap of a garment. If one chooses to place his lechi, somewhere in the middle of his mavi, he may use the interior portion of that mavi up until the lechi. And the lechi must be placed within three tfachim to the wall and three tfachim of the ground in order to be kasha. 